Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to thepixellab.net. I have a really fun tutorial for you today about UV multipasses. And this is something that I've been experimenting with for a little while, and I'm starting to understand the power of using this technique, and it's uh, actually pretty exciting. So I'm using this plugin called Remap by Revision Effects. You can find that at revisioneffects.com. And uh, this plugin is an After Effects plugin which can interpret a UV pass, a UV multipass from Cinema 4D, and put uh, 2D elements on top of that UV pass so they stick to it. So let's go ahead and show you what is going on. So I have this nifty little flag waving in the wind here, kind of a little banner. And uh, if you guys don't know how to do this, maybe I'll do this in a tutorial in the future, but it's a very, very nice technique using uh, the cloth tag. Um, yeah, so I got this guy set up and I'm just gonna have kind of a flat gray texture on here. So the real uh, power is in your multi-pass and you gotta make sure you do a few things here. Um, so the one thing about using a UVW pass is that you're going to be fighting jagged edges the whole time. There's a bunch of little steps that you can do to improve this. So um, I'm just going to kind of outline a few things you need to be aware of. First, um, I've done this with the standard render engine and the physical one. And um, the physical one actually seems to do a much better job. I'm not sure if that's just me or if I'm using the wrong settings, but physical seems to do a very good job. Um, the other thing is I'm using straight alpha, uh, which seems to work better. Maybe that's just my imagination, but the big thing that you need to know is do not use 8-bit. Use either 16 or 32. So for this example, I'm going to use 32-bit. Now what you need to do is go to your multi-pass tab and go to the bottom. Almost at the bottom, there's a material UVW. Let's go ahead and click that. Let's turn on our multi-pass. So the material UVW has absolutely zero options. And uh, that's all you need to do actually, is just check that on, have your multi-pass, go into your multi-pass and make sure that you're at 32 bits on there as well, straight alpha. And that is it, that's all you have to do. Uh, you might wanna throw an object buffer on your flag, but besides that, you are good to render. So the beauty of this is that, let's say we need to project a logo onto this flag, but we have like 20 logos. Uh, instead of rendering this out, 20 different times with 20 different logos, we can render this out one time and do everything in After Effects, which is going to be a huge time saver. So that is the beauty of where this technique will come in handy. So I went ahead and rendered that and let's go ahead and jump into After Effects. So let's import our file and let's see where to stick this guy. UV remap renders. Uh, so we're gonna get a few different things here. Let's go ahead and bring in our main RGBA pass first. Make sure it's straight unmatted. And let's go ahead and dump that into a new composition. All right, so there's our flag. Very nice. And now let's bring in our UVW pass. And we'll show you what that's gonna look like. So go ahead and open that up. And here it is, our UVW pass. This is what it looks like. So it basically takes a gradient of colors from green to red, and it projects them onto your 3D object. And then all of these uh, colors can be interpreted in After Effects to show where that 2D object needs to stick on here. All right, so now what we need to do is pick a image that we're gonna project onto here. So I have this image of uh, FC Barcelona, which is the best soccer club in the world. If you have any hate comments, you can go ahead and put those uh, below this post, uh, but you are wrong. This is the best team in the world. All right, so we're gonna turn the eyeball off on this guy because we just need it for reference. And now we're gonna go to our multi-UV and let's go to Effect, Revision Effects Plugins, and then Remap UV. It's gonna turn it red because we need to specify which texture to use. So let's go to our texture and go to that number one FC Barcelona. And now we're getting somewhere. So there is a lot wrong with this right now, but we're on the right track. So uh, we can flip this, uh, but we can't rotate it. So we could flip this guy all around, but we want to actually rotate this. So let's go ahead and layer pre-compose this guy. And we'll go into it and go to composition, composition settings, and we're gonna actually flop these. So. 768, all right, so now it's flopped, and then we'll just rotate this 90 degrees and go back to our test. So now we can actually go ahead and go ahead and flip this guy on the X, and now we are getting somewhere. 
So let's go ahead and make this a little bit prettier before we get into some of the settings. We need an alpha channel to cut out this background. That's where your object buffer would have come in handy. Um, I didn't render one out, but I do have the RGBA pass, which has an alpha, so we can actually use that as an object buffer. So we'll duplicate it, put it on top, and go ahead and change our multi-UV to alpha mat. Now if we solo that guy and turn on our transparency, you can see that we actually have our transparent background. All right, so now we're getting somewhere. Um, let's see here. One thing you'll note is that the texture does not line up very well, right? We can actually go ahead and uh, change a lot of these uh, parameters in here. We can kind of push the texture around, which is really great. We can stretch it and move it around, do all this different stuff. Um, but that is not gonna get us to where we need to be because there's a little gotcha that you need to know about. And that is in your multi-UV pass, it comes in interpreting this wrong by default. We need to right click on that pass, interpret footage, go to main, and then on this interpret footage, click on the color management tab. And we need to click on preserve RGB. Watch this image as I click on it. Here we go. So it basically uh, changes the way that it's interpreting the RGBA of this UV pass so that it lines up correctly with the texture. All right, so that is a must do uh, little gotcha. So now you can see that we're having some problems with the jagged edges, right? That's because this is a 32-bit image, but our project file in After Effects is only 8-bit right now. So go ahead and hold down Alter Option and click on this to change to 16-bit, and it'll get a little better. Do it one more time to 32-bit, and we'll get a little better yet. Um, if you'll notice on this texture, there are a few jagged edges, and that is probably because we just need to play around with the uh, kind of the stretching and scaling of this guy. If we go ahead and slide these, we're gonna get these little handles at the top and bottom. We can just kind of pull these around. There should be one down here as well. We can sort of pull this around and stretch out our image and just kind of place it where we want it to be, right? So something like that is probably pretty accurate. And if we go ahead and zoom into 100%, you can see that those jagged edges are gone. And uh, one thing I do want to note is that occasionally you'll have a little bit of fringing on this guy. So let me see. Yeah, it'll look something like this, right? It's kind of a little fringe. And if you go to your edges threshold and play around with that, if you drop that down, a lot of the times it will resolve that problem. So now you can see that that little edge is kind of gone and it looks really, really nice. Another thing you can do is play around with um, putting a, a simple choker and choking it a pixel or two. But uh, really, this looks pretty good. So um, there are going to be problems with uh, your fringe if you don't follow all of these things. There's a bunch of little steps. Make sure you're in 32 bits per channel, straight alpha. Make sure you're using the physical render. Make sure your anti-aliasing is set pretty high in there. I think I kicked up my anti-aliasing a little bit. And uh, that is about it. Make sure to go in to your UV pass, interpret it and do that RGBA checkbox. That's about it. You should have really, really good results if you do all those steps. There's one other thing you can play around with, and that is the mip map. If you go ahead and check that on, it's gonna basically soften uh, the jagged edges just a little bit, and you can go ahead and kick that way up. If we turn it way up, you're gonna see it's basically softening those edges and blurring it a little bit. But if you put it down to a reasonable amount, it's just gonna soften those edges. So you can play around with that. It's kind of subtle, but that might be something you wanna check out. Now we have everything set up, but if you'll notice, it doesn't really look like it's on this flag, right? It is stretching and warping, which is great. But one thing that you're gonna wanna do is change your transfer mode of this guy to multiply. And then you're gonna pick up all those shadows, right? Um, let's go ahead and go to our background and let's do a, a color correction levels. So we can kind of crush the whites and the blacks and uh, let's see here, make those shadows pretty obvious, but be able to kind of lighten up the image a little bit. And it looks like there is anti-aliasing on the sides, but if you zoom into 100%, it's gone. So just so that you know. Um, yeah, so now we get those really nice shadows. And let me go ahead and do a RAM preview for you. So the really great part about this technique is that we have this completely set up now. And now if we have 20 other logos, all we have to do is go into our pre-comp, go ahead and throw in a different image into there, and boom, there you go. We have a completely different image and it's on that flag. It's completely stuck on there. It's warping and uh, it's really, really fast from this point forward. So it definitely takes a couple extra steps to set this whole thing up.
but depending on your project, this could save you hours and hours and hours of rendering. So I would definitely encourage you to play around with this. My recommendation would be to render one test frame and kind of composite everything and make sure your settings are correct and you're uh, not having any problems and then go ahead and render everything. So that is exactly how to do the UVW pass and uh, composite a 2D image into it. The nice thing about this is that uh, a lot of the times if you're doing like a video board in cinema and you replace the screen in After Effects, it's a flat square plane. Um, and that's very, very easy to do. Um, but if your plane is kind of warped or bent or, you know, if you have a curved video board, you can't go ahead and put a plane on here in After Effects. And, you know, if it's if it's warped, there's no way to replace that. But using this UVW pass, you can put a, um, a 2D image on any kind of geometry and it's going to stick right on there. So the next time a project comes up and you have 20 different versions or logos or uh, different things you need to replace, uh, just kind of think about maybe experimenting with this technique. Uh, very, very cool stuff. Thanks guys for checking out my website. I really appreciate it. And we will talk again next time. Bye everybody.